Hello, my name is Dr. Rob Young. I'm a performance psychologist and a coach at a consultancy called Talent Space. And I'd like to talk to you about the impact of technology and social media in your life. Now, we clearly need to use social media to some extent to keep in touch with friends, family, and of course, business connections. So it's helpful to be able to use things like WhatsApp, LinkedIn, perhaps Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or some combination of similar apps. Because if you're not using these digital apps, then you could mark yourself out as a bit of a dinosaur, someone who is either unwilling or worse, unable to use new technology. However, just because we need to use social media doesn't mean that we need to spend hours on it. There's no strong evidence to say that using a lot of social media can cause psychological harm to all people, but there is some emerging evidence to say that certain more vulnerable people who perhaps may be more predisposed to anxiety and depression may be harmed by using it. And of course, using social media can distract many more people from doing the things that we should be doing in real life. So if you think that you need to readjust your relationship with social media, then I suggest working through three questions. So the first question is to what extent are you using social media to learn and to grow your knowledge? For example, I enjoy following the Washington Post and the New York Times in the US, and then sources such as the Guardian newspaper, The Economist magazine, and the BBC in the UK. And I find that for me personally, these five sources are really key for giving me good quality, impartial insight into world affairs, politics, and business. Another question to think about is to what extent are you using social media to keep in touch with important friends, family and business connections? For example, there are some people who can get into the trap of just growing their follower base or trying to add more and more friends. And they're just trying to grow the quantity of connections that they have without thinking about the quality of them. But that can be a somewhat empty, narcissistic experience. So if you find that you're just liking people's content in order to grow the numbers of your followers or alleged connections, then again, you may need to curb your use a little bit. A third question to think about is to what extent you're using social media to keep in touch with topics and things that are personally valuable to you. For example, some people use social media to pursue their faith or their religion. Some people use social media to keep in touch with a valuable pastime, perhaps a sport or a hobby. And these are good reasons for using social media. But again, if you are using social media for merely distracting or diverting topics, then maybe it's time to curtail your use somewhat. Now, so far I've been talking about your use of social media on your own private time, but it's worth thinking about how we use social media and technology in front of other people as well. Because psychologists have been researching a phenomenon called thubbing recently, which is a contraction of the words phone and snubbing. So phone snubbing becomes thubbing. And this occurs when you are in a room with one other person, but one of you is perhaps scrolling and scrolling, perhaps on social media or on other apps. And this breaks eye contact and it makes the conversation more difficult. And psychologists have found that people on the receiving end of fubbing tend to feel quite socially excluded. And indeed, when I conducted a survey into this topic recently, 84% of people said that yes, they found it rude when they were on the receiving end of being fubbed. So bear in mind that even if you personally don't mind it when other people use their phones in front of you, that more than eight in 10 people probably are finding you rude if you're using your phone in front of them.